welcome to my GP cloud we're going through our inventory section here I'm gonna go through a little bit of inventory setup we'll look at some unit of measure schedules inventory sites we'll look at the class setup and then we'll enter in an item I'm gonna start off here by clicking under setup uh, the inventory control area now this is some basic setups that you can do for inventory one is the user category here uh, I've listed three different categories these are user defined categories that you can add to each uh, to, to your items if you click on the little arrow next to this you can add different descriptions for this one this was manufacturer and it listed as attractive here but these are things that you can add as as different identifiers within your inventory item Another thing listed here in the inventory control setup window is the segment ID for sites. This division is pulling off of the GL account format and so that is a particular part of the account structure so that when you sell an item it can distribute to the appropriate GL account format so that you don't have to do the individual distributions yourself. Um, the other thing here if we go over to classes and I've pulled up the item class setup. I've set this as a default class and this is a one that I use quite often but just like the accounts receivables and payables there's a bunch of things in here that you can default so that when you're setting up an inventory item uh, all these are pre-populated. The unit of measure schedule ID is listed here as each uh, and if I click on that let me just show you what that that looks like in this unit of measure schedule setup this one is listed as each and you can see down here I have one item is listed as the quantity for each and I can also list a case here and so 10 items in this in this uh, unit of measure schedule would be associated with that as a case the decimal places is important the quantity is listed as zero here so that uh, allows that to, to have only uh, whole units here and you can have as many different unit measure schedules as you like. You can see here is an example of uh, a bunch of different unit measure schedules. I would recommend using the each to start with. You can get as fancy as you like and add a bunch of other things that are maybe appropriate for your business, but uh, the base unit of measure schedule usually is listed as the each. The last thing here under the item class setup, if you go under accounts, the last part of this uh, item class setup is the accounts. Now by default all of these really need to be filled out for your system to work properly and so I'd go in and fill these out. If you go to your sales order processing window and try to enter in a transaction and hit post if these aren't filled out often you'll get an error message so even if you're never going to use markdowns or sales returns or or any any of these other ones I'd recommend filling these all out and even uh, in use and variance and assembly you know these ones that don't have anything in just put something in there so that that there is no errors when you're entering in sales order processing transactions I'm gonna back out of this window and we'll come over and we'll look at and, and that's the last part here you can go through these these uh, setup windows but I'm gonna go over to our sites so I'm gonna go under cards and then list site and here I'm gonna show you all the different sites that I have set up in this system now there's a whole bunch of them. I'm just going to focus on the warehouse. If I can spell it right, this is the main site. And you can have as many different site IDs as you'd like. Uh, this one is going to be set up here. And if I wanted to use this account segment IDs, this is that division that we set up in the inventory setup. And I could put this in here, for example, say a 200. And anytime I have an item that is sold in or out of the warehouse site, it's going to distribute this at your GL account structure to the 200 division. So that is where you can change the where, where things are distributed when you're selling or buying items. And now let's go in and enter in an item. If I go under cards and I choose item, and this will pull up my item maintenance window. I'm going to just select one of the items that are already listed here in the system. Here's my phone and it's the green phone. This one's listed as a sales inventory item and you can list off the different valuation methods LIFO, FIFO, periodic or perpetual. Often I'll set it as FIFO perpetual but you can do it as you like. You can see the different types of items here. The sales inventory is is the basic inventory item. The only other one that I ever usually use is the services. If you use a if you use services as the item type, 
inventory isn't kept track of so if you're buying and selling it doesn't really matter it doesn't keep track of the quantity on hand if it's a or quantity available if it's a services here we can add in a class ID if you wanted to put in the class ID and if you see here it's asking do you want to update it and now everything that is associated with that class ID will be populated for this this item and if you go under options and accounts you see everything that is filled in automatically because of that class ID the last thing that I, ha I suggest here whenever you're setting up an inventory item this little go to button is your your friend here you should really go through every single one of these these items here in this go to button so if I click on item currency this will take you to the basic area of of what uh, the currency should be selected for this one and so if I go just down through each one of these the price list this price list is set up here where I can have multiple different prices for this particular item and you can see here one is the each price and here is a case and so you you get the different prices listed here you can have a, a straight currency amount if you just want to do that or you can do a markup as percentage of the current cost which is what is associated here in this this item but you can come in here often people will use this as a wholesale retail so this one gives you a little bit of different pricing for your your different particular situations this price list when you're setting this up the default price le level and the default selling unit of measure this is also speeds up the entering processes when you're going through the sales order processing window you when you're entering in the item these will default there so you don't have to go in and manually put that in I'm just going to go back into that item maintenance window and just show you the other go-to's quantity and sites. This window here shows you how much is on hand, how much was sold, and how much is allocated. Allocated means that if it's on an inv invoice or has been allocated on an order, these ones will show you where, where those are allocated. And here is the site's IDs that it is associated with. And so here's all the different areas of the that the sites are listed here, and the on hand and sold for each uh, each site listed. And I come off of the item quantities window, purchasing. If I go over to purchasing, you see that this one can be purchased as a whole or a case. And then if I come back here under vendors, these are the vendors that I can associate with this item. So this one is for Ace Travel and it tells you a, a bunch of different si uh, things here for your uh, for your vendors and really if, unless you have a kit unless it's a kit item you don't really need to do that history isn't that Im that important unless you want to look at the history for that and it, item resource planning just gives you a, a little bit of uh, planning when you're trying to do the generation of your purchase orders you can uh, use PO generator you can do a fixed order order point uh, quantity all those different things here for the item resource planning one last thing here on the item maintenance window if you go back over to the options window you can see that the categories that were listed in that inventory control setup area are listed here and, and this is where you can put in more information there there's three other categories you can have six in all that will list off specific information for for these inventory items so in summary we've gone through the inventory setup we've looked at inventory sites We've talked about classes and then we've entered in an inventory item. We should be able to go through the sales order processing entry window now and, and we'll do that in a future video.